Hello there. Well, we're back again to continue our conversation about the monastic promises. This time I'd like to address that aspect of the promises which we call fidelity to the monastic way of life. <clears throat> that promise, if you think about the very first word, fidelity, faithfulness, to the monastic way of life includes the theological virtues of poverty and chastity. We don't actually mention those in our promises, but they certainly are included. So I'd like to address that whole idea of fidelity and talk a little bit about concepts of chastity and poverty. Fidelity or faithfulness to the monastic way of life very simply means that I have chosen this way to leave or to lead my life. A married couple chooses each other. Uh, a person who is single chooses that lifestyle. The monastic way says, I am going to live in such a manner that I have time for prayer, that I have time to share with my community, that I am being faithful to what I am called to do with regard to the rule. Of Benedict. And so sometimes people will say, well, how is fidelity to the monastic way different from stability? Fidelity is not so much um, maybe the, the rooting, as I talked about, the going deep that we speak of in, in stability but maybe more the, the idea of the road ahead, of looking at and adhering to, being faithful to this environment, this whole way of life that I have chosen to live. Let me take a look at what we call poverty, and hopefully it'll kind of explain a little better what, what we mean by that. As Benedictines, we don't really vow poverty in the sense of destitution in any way, shape, or form. Benedict makes it very clear that we are to have what we need, but we never really claim it as our own. Yes, I have an office. I have access to a car. I have um, my needs taken care of but it's because of the community. And when I live this way of life, I think in terms of, I shouldn't go out and buy the most expensive item um, or be extravagant in what I do because it's to be shared with all. And because we share all things in common, then my simple lifestyle aids us as a community in being able to do many things. Uh, by living simply, uh, as someone once said, others can simply live. And that's an aspect of this fidelity to the monastic way. It includes living this more simple lifestyle not destitute, as I say, but living simply, sharing what I have with my sisters. As far as celibacy or chastity, and I actually like to refer to it as celibate chastity, I'd like to elaborate a little on that. In the monastic 
way of life. Um, I'm living with this community of other women. So they become, as it were, my family. Whether one is married and has a family, a husband, a children, the whole idea of chastity is still there. Chastity really is a word that kind of refers to living purely, um, uh, being whole and holy uh, and holistic, I guess you could say, in how we relate to one another. Chastity says, I reverence you as a human being. You are a child of God. And I honor that and I respect you. And the same goes for myself. That I need to honor and keep holy who I am. I live celibacy. A married couple, of course, does not live celibacy, but they certainly must live chastely, reverencing each other. So the combination of those two terms, that I choose to forego a sexual relationship, but I also choose to enhance my relationships with others, by treating them with the utmost respect, dignity, um, reverencing them as a child of God, and doing the same in my own life. So hopefully that all kind of fits together in then the way in which I live out this monastic life. And when I do that well, then I'm being faithful or I am practicing fidelity to this monastic way. So I hope that clarifies that promise or that aspect of the promises we make. Thank you. See you next time.